Hi, welcome to the latest press sign training video. In this particular episode, we'll be looking at using press sign to calibrate an HP Indigo machine. Calibrating a digital press with press sign could be just as straightforward as calibrating a litho press. In some ways, it can be simpler. Although we don't control the machine in the same way, we don't control things such as ducts or the mixture of the ink, the consistency of the ink and the consistency of the machine mean that the process is generally a lot quicker. In the forthcoming presentation, we're going to show you just how easy it is to implement the colour managed output on your indigo. Starting with the setting up and printing of a linear job in the H3 RIP, we'll then go on to show you how to measure and use the results in press sign to create a lookup table which can then be used with your RIP for greatly improved colour results. Before we start, I'd like to give you some background on the file we'll be using to test our output and make our curve adjustment. This is our press sign press sheet. You've probably seen similar files to this from press manufacturers and software developers. What makes this sheet special are the colour bars that run horizontally at the top and the bottom of the job. These contain all the information we need to deduce how your press is working and what adjustments need to be made. As well as the standard CMYK patches and tints, we also have the secondary colour and grey balance patches. For this demonstration we've included them on our standard test sheet, but they can easily be added to any test or live jobs through most rips or workflows. So we're working today with the SmartStream onboard server from HP. This is your normal job list window. And what we're going to do here is create a new template that's going to handle our jobs in a linear fashion. In our example here, we're going to copy uh, an impact method from an existing source, but we're going to overwrite the name to effectively create a new hot folder set. Once we do this, and we give it a, an effective name, in this case Bodoni, uh, we click on the edit button, and we go in, and we make sure that we set our job up as linear. Now it's important at this stage that we make sure that there's no color management being applied and this is what we're doing at the moment. So we've taken off any embedded profiles and we just need to make sure that some of the other options in the RIP such as the page layout or any imposition stuff has also been turned off. What we're actually doing there is creating an environment which is conducive for our linear job. So we want to print the press on job that we've just seen and we want to make sure that there's nothing external being applied to it. So we've just picked it up now and we're moving it into the RIP using our new job ticket and template that we've created. Now we're just waiting for the job to come in. Now it's in. We have a specific job name. The job's just appeared in our queue. It's a normal PDF. And what we've done now is we've just renamed it to reflect that this is part of our linear test. This is the paper that we're using. And now, just like any other job in the RIP, we're just gonna run it through And get our output. So what, just to recap here what we've done is we've created a, uh, a job set which has no color management controls on it. This is important obviously because we don't want anything interfering with our, our linear uh, job. It's also important before we start to do this Obviously that we make sure that our machine's working correctly, there's no problems that we've, we've, we've got, that everything's running as smoothly as possible. So we've got a message coming up here about a densitometer calibration. We should always make sure that the machine's been calibrated using the onboard densitometer as much as possible. So we launch press sign, and we log in as normal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna basically edit an existing profile in this case the ISO coated V2 profile um, and we're going to import the paper wipe from the paper that we're using. We do this because it's highly likely that the paper that we're using in our digital machine isn't going to be the same uh, paper wipe as is in the ISO coated standard. 
So here we're selecting the ISO coated V2 and we're going to uh, paper color option in press sign and here we're now going to measure the white point. So once that's done you can see here that there's a difference between the profile and the, the white point that's in there and you can see in the diagram a shift of the gamut as the white point is adjusted. Important here to give the profile a new name, overwrite the, uh, don't overwrite the existing one. So we're going to give this an edited name or put the, the paper name on the end. And once we've done that, we can then save our new standard. and now create a new job. So we go into the new job window, give the job an ID or name. Down here we also have the press uh, type we're using, in this case obviously it's the Indigo. We're controlling all of our paper settings in here and we can make some comments if we need to use things for reference later. Now what you can't see here is we open up our measurement window and we now take our first measurement. So we me measure the color bar that we've used in our linear job. And once this comes in, we then get a score. Now for the moment, we're not too worried about this because we, we understand our press isn't gonna be calibrated. And what we can see is the overall score, the curves, and now we can export the curve, the compensation that's been made. For inclusion now into our HP Indigo software. So we're back into the Indigo software again now. We've created our linear curves. And we just need to make sure that we can import them into the job. So we've got our lookup table files now, which we're browsing to. These are the files, obviously, we've just generated. And we get four files, obviously, one for each separation. And we include these in the RIP one by one, as you can see here. And then we give our new lookup table set a name. As you can see, fairly straightforward. And once this is done, they're now ready to be used in our forthcoming jobs. What we do now is we take our press sign job again. And this time make sure it has our amended template in there. The job is then ran with the new lookup tables in place. And we just wait for the job to go through. So while this is running, what we now need to do is run press on again. And take a remeasurement. So 
we've had our linear information placed in there we're now going to take a check and see what adding our linear queue has done to our job so effectively we've got the same job running we've just imported our lookup tables from the previous uh, linear measurement and they now belong to the template in the HP so we start our measurement again this time based on our new uh, curve adjusted sheet and as you can see we get a far better score this time what we can do now in press sign is generate a report that has our score which we can then include and send to our customers equally we can also print a label which we can attach to the proof which obviously can also be, be sent. sent thank you for watching this press sign training video if you'd like to learn more about the product or the company please visit our website www.bodoni.co.uk www.pressign.com Thank you.